Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be installing an operating system inside the program VirtualBox. And VirtualBox is a, uh, a, a piece of software that lets you basically create uh, virtual computers or um, you know, virtual machines inside your own computer. So here I have my operating system that I'm running now. And I want to run a different operating system, but I don't want to install it alongside my main operating system. So I can run uh, a virtual machine and basically have a, a computer inside a computer. You can think of it that way. And today we are going to be installing an, another version of Linux inside our virtual, uh, uh, virtual machine or uh, inside VirtualBox. Uh, and the version of Linux we're going to install is called Kali Linux, which is used for um, penetration testing and also sometimes for digital forensics. So the first thing you need to do um, is download uh, VirtualBox, if you don't have it. it uh, it's basically free for Linux, uh, OS X, and Windows. Um, and it works quite well in most of those operating systems. Um, and I, you also need to download uh, Kali Linux. And I'll put the links um, for Kali Linux and VirtualBox inside the, uh, the description bar. I am on a 64-bit host system, so my computer that I'm using is a 64-bit system, so you want to um, choose the version of Kali Linux based on the system that you're actually on and also based on the interface that you want to use. So for example, I'm going to be using just uh, Kali Linux 64-bit uh, and we're going to download the ISO and I've downloaded it from a torrent. Um, I won't talk about how to download those from a torrent here, but I am using Kali Linux 64-bit. You can use any one that works for your system. Um, uh, in this case, it's just basically the interface that's different um, or the, the build that's different. Okay, so once we have that downloaded, uh, VirtualBox Manager will look something very similar to this. Um, so once you know where your, uh, your operating system ISO is, and an ISO is a disk image that's basically a, a representation of a CD or a DVD. Um, I've already downloaded mine into the downloads folder, so now that I know where it is, I want to start creating the virtual machine. So I want to click on new, make a new virtual machine. I'm going to call it something very specific, so in this case I can just call it Kali Linux. Okay, so Kali Linux. And you notice that uh, virtual, VirtualBox automatically detects the type as Linux. If it didn't detect the type as Linux, make sure that you choose Linux from the type menu. Now we have a couple different options. Uh, make sure you're choosing Linux if you're using Kali Linux. If it's Windows, you can choose Microsoft Windows, etc. Okay. Uh, and then the version, this is just uh, basically using a, a general version. Um, Kali Linux is based on, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ubuntu 64. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Ubuntu 64. Um, but you can choose, for example, just the generic uh, generic Linux 2.6, 3x, 4x. Uh, we want to make sure that we select 64-bit because I'm using a 64-bit uh, ISO image on a 64-bit host system. If my computer, if my main computer is a 32-bit system, then I need to choose 32-bit for both the ISO and uh, the virtual machine that we're creating. So um, don't try to run a 64-bit uh, a system on a 32-bit host, okay? Um, so in this case, my computer is 64-bit, and I also want the uh, virtual machine to be 64-bit. So I'm going to choose Ubuntu 64-bit. So I've called it, I've given it a unique name, Kali Linux. The type is Linux, and the version is, in this case, Ubuntu 64. Okay, so I'm going to click Next, and I'm going to give it um, as much memory as you can. The more memory you give it, the more... Um, let's say realistic or the more resources that the virtual machine will have to work with. Uh, so I'm going to give it six gigabytes of, of RAM. In this case, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM total. Um, you don't want to basically for your own computer, you want to make sure that you do not go much above this red area. Okay. So give it as much RAM as you can, but don't give it much above the, this, this red area. Now, in this case, our virtual machine, is sharing resources with our host. Okay, so think about that for a second. 
The more resources we give our virtual machine, the less resources our host will be able to use at the same time, right? So if we give it too much, too many resources, uh, in this case, if we give the virtual machine too much RAM, then we're taking RAM away or we're using too much of the host's memory and the host won't be able to sustain itself. So try to strike a balance between uh, how well your virtual machine works and how well your host works. Okay, so once I've given it the amount of memory that I, I think uh, I'm going to use, now I click next. Uh, for the hard disk, we are going to create a virtual hard disk, and I'm just going to keep the create virtual hard disk now selected. The recommended size is 8 gigabytes, but I'm going to give it more than that um, in a second. Okay, so we click create to create the virtual hard disk. Hard disk file type, you can choose basically any type you want, but if you're not going to uh, share this, this virtual hard drive with other systems, uh, just choose VDI or the virtual box disk image. Okay, and that's, that's just default, uh, it works quite well. Okay, now we need to decide whether it's gonna be dynamically allocated or a fixed size. If it's a fixed size, then the disk will be completely allocated right now. So we will create a file that becomes the virtual hard drive and it will be uh, allocated completely uh, right now. If it's dynamically allocated, then it will be allocated uh, or the, the, disk fi uh, the file size of the virtual disk will grow as the files are, um, as the space is actually used on the virtual hard drive. So the more files you have on the hard drive, uh, the bigger the file will get to a certain maximum size. But if we use fixed size, then all of the space is used right now. So unless you're going to use a lot of space on your virtual disk, um, which you know may, well, depending on what you use it for, you might use a lot of space, um, but I normally choose dynamically allocated so that way I can save some space on my host at least for a little bit until I fill up the, the hard drive in the virtual machine. Okay, so I'm gonna choose dynamically allocated and click next. Uh, the, si or the name of the hard disk and also where it's located. I've already moved uh, the location, or the, uh, let's say VirtualBox creates a default location for where the virtual disks are saved. If you want to change the location, just make sure you change it to a place uh, that has enough space. So for example, if I give, uh, if I say that this virtual hard disk is going to be eight gigabytes, then my host storage device has to be bigger than eight gigabytes, right? So uh, we can't make a virtual hard disk that's bigger than the actual uh, physical hard drive that we're saving something on, okay? So um, right now on my hard disk, I think I have about uh, one, one terabyte free. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this uh, 64 gigabytes, whoops. 64 gigabytes of space. I don't really expect I'll need more than that because I normally share the hard drive on the host with the hard drive in the, the, the virtual machine, uh, depending on what I'm trying to do. So 64 should be okay for me for now. Choose however much space you think you will need. Again, you are sharing hard drive space uh, with the virtual machine and with your host. So think about how much space do you have on your hard drive right now? And how much space do you think the virtual machine will need? Uh, by default, this one recommends eight gigabytes, but I think I'm gonna need at least 20 to 30 gigabytes for this uh, this Kali Linux system. So I'm gonna give it 64 just because I, ha I do have the space available um, and I wanna give myself a little bit of room in case I'm doing something that needs a little bit more space. So again, think about your host and think about the uh, virtual machine, uh, what, what you might need to run or might, how much space you need. Then click create, and now the virtual hard drive is created, and now we need to go through and make a few changes to this. So I'm gonna click on the general tab, okay? So general tab, and then we basically have everything that we've already set, and I wanna click advanced. I can see where my uh, my snapshots folder is. Uh, I can see whether shared clipboard and drag and drop are, in this case, disabled. I'm gonna keep that there for now. Description, I don't need a description. Innate encryption, I don't need to enable encryption on this. Um, it's actually already encrypted on disk, okay? So if we go to the system tab, or the system uh, menu bar, uh, you can see the boot order. Uh, this is kind of like the, the BIOS, um, or yeah, this is the BIOS essentially. Um, 
and we have the amount of RAM, so we can still change the, the amount of RAM. So this gives you a place to be able to, uh, uh, let's say, experiment with your system and your your virtual machine. If your virtual machine is taking up too, me too much memory or it doesn't have enough memory, you can go into the system settings and change the amount of memory that it's using. Uh, some operating systems, um, uh, yeah, some operating systems need to configure these extended features. We won't talk about that now because we don't need to do it. Um, the boot order, we will be pretending to use a, uh, we have a virtual CD-ROM basically. This ISO file that we downloaded is a virtual CD-ROM, so we need to think about the boot order and make sure that this is at least checked, and we also need the hard disk checked. We do not need, in this case, the floppy, but I'm going to keep it on anyway. One of the important things is the processor. How many processors do you want to use? So I have eight CPUs in this computer. So for my host, I have eight. I'm going to give the guest, the guest or the virtual machine, four of those processors. Now, again, we don't want to really go into um, too much of the processing power of the host. Otherwise, our host will not work very well. Execution cap is how much of the processor the guest can actually use. So in this case, I give the guest four processors and it can use 100% of those four processors. Okay, next acceleration, we don't really need to, to mess with here. Okay, display, if you're planning on playing any games or anything like that, you might wanna bump up the virtual memory here. Um, but yeah, uh, basically we don't really change display too much unless you really need to. Uh, you can also do video capture within the virtual machine and uh, remote display as well. We are not gonna touch that too much. Next is storage. And this is where I need to, to configure um, or tell the virtual machine to use Kali Linux ISO to boot from initially. So here I do controller IDE, select empty, select the CD-ROM and choose virtual optical disk file. Now inside my downloads folder, I have Kali Linux 16.2 uh, AMD 64 ISO. So this is a 64 bit. Okay, I click open. And now the controller IDE Kali Linux 2016.2 uh, AMD 64 ISO has been selected. So now this is, uh, it's almost like putting in a CD into your computer, okay? So we have a CD in the computer right now and we also have this virtual hard drive that we've already created. Okay, uh, audio, we don't really need to mess with. Uh, network, I will change. Right now it's attached to NAT. And that means that this computer, my host computer, is basically going to take care of the uh, the network connection for the guest computer. So on the network, um, on the real network, the host computer um, basically handles the traffic for both the host and the guest. But I want a bridged adapter, and the bridged ad bridged adapter uh, basically tells me uh, or gives the um, this virtual machine direct access to, in this case, this wireless card. So the wireless card that's installed in my computer right now, I want to give this uh, virtual machine direct access to that wireless card. Okay, so I'm going to change uh, the network to bridged adapter, give it direct access to the wireless card. The other card is my um, wired connection. Uh, serial parts, USB, shared folders, and user interface. Uh, we don't really, I mean, I, I hardly ever use serial ports and USB. Uh, we can add USB devices to the virtual machine just like normal. We can also add shared folders and I would configure this after I install guest additions into uh, the virtual machine that we create. So shared folders basically lets me share files between the host and the virtual machine. So it is very useful, but I won't configure it right now. And that's pretty much it for the configuration. Uh, just think about the resources that you're using and think about the um, uh, the network connections and how you want your virtual machine to actually connect through the network. So now we click on Kali Linux, it's powered off, click start, and and then we get Kali Linux booting up. If you don't get Kali Linux booting up, it could be because you either didn't insert the disk correctly or um, uh, the boot order or the boot menu wasn't wasn't installed correctly. Okay, so Kali Linux should boot up and then it says live AMD 64. Uh, we have forensic mode. Um, we have USB persistence, encrypted persistence. Um, and I am going to go with install 
Actually, I'll just go with the graphical install so we can see it. Um, so the graphical install here, I can boot the computer and use all of the functions of Kali Linux in a live CD without actually installing it inside my, my virtual machine. But right now I actually want to install the system. So I'm going to go to graphical install. Now it's booted up. We can click, uh, I'm just gonna click uh, uh, install it in English. I'm gonna go ahead and choose in the United States and American English. I'm going to keep the default username and click continue. Uh, the domain name, um, I'm just going to put invalid.edu. Uh, you can put whatever domain name, domain name you want, unless you are on a real domain name, a uh, real domain. Uh, the root password here, um, I'm just going to put a, a basic password um, just for this example. Okay, so you should put a, a, a good password for, for root. Um, again, if you're gonna use this, this system in a, in a real test, or you're actually gonna have the system on the internet for longer than a, a couple seconds, you do really want to configure uh, a much better password than what I'm using here. Okay, time zone, yeah, I'll just say Eastern. So now we're doing partitioning of the virtual hard drive. So I'm going to use guided, use entire disk, basically just choose the default. Again, we're in a virtual machine um, and I'm just mostly gonna accept the defaults. I just wanna use the software and not care so much about the, uh, the actual virtual machine. Uh, all files in one position, partition, yes, okay. So now we've finished, um, right changes disk, yes, continue. So we finished um, partitioning the disk and installing the file system on the virtual hard drive. Notice we haven't installed anything. We haven't actually changed anything about our host operating system. We are only changing data inside this virtual machine, not the actual uh, host. Okay, so now this is going to copy data to disk and we will speed it up um, so you don't have to watch it. Okay, so now it's asking for a network mirror. Um, this may also, uh, let's say we want to use a network mirror to make new software. We do want to update our, our software on here. If you need to use an HTTP proxy, proxy uh, do you want to use it now? I do not have a proxy set up um, uh, for this network or I'm not going to go through a proxy in this case. So if you do need to use a proxy, just enter it here. And now it's configuring the software and it will try to update um, update at least some of the core software before we actually get into it. Okay, now it's asking to install the bootloader and this is required to actually start the, the virtual computer up. Uh, so we're gonna install it and click continue. Yeah, so let's just choose uh, the actual hard disk and click continue. Okay, so now the installation is complete. Click continue. Okay, so now this is the uh, Grub bootloader and we can see Kali Linux um, is basically selected to boot automatically. Again, we are in our virtual machine. So this is a virtual computer. Uh, it's now booting Kali Linux uh, in the virtual machine. So now we have our uh, our system. 
uh, booted up. We're, we know that we're actually in uh, Kali Linux, so our username, remember we had the user root and whatever your password for root was. And then this is the uh, Kali Linux desktop. We see all of our tools over here. If we go to applications, uh, we can see all of the different categories uh, of tools that we might want to use. So uh, that's it for installing Kali Linux in VirtualBox. If you were using a different operating system, the same, uh, let's see, process applies for any operating system you're using. And even installing Windows is very similar to this process. Um, so now you know how to install a, a system in VirtualBox. Next, we'll talk about how to um, upgrade and basically configure the virtual machine once it's installed. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to check out my channel and don't forget to subscribe.